Oh. Hey there, friends. <laughs> welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. That was really loud. I just, like, yelled. Um, welcome to It's So Tiny, Episode 2. Uh, I want to thank you for being here, for joining me. Uh, I'm super excited for today's episode, as I am all the episodes. Uh, today we are painting He-Man. Uh, this is a model uh, that is from uh, Archon Game Studios. Uh, it is for a unreleased game coming out soon-ish, I think, uh, called Fields of Eternia. Uh, it is a UK exclusive game, or an EU exclusive game, I think. Um, but I have been fortunate enough to get my hands on uh, a few of the models. Uh, so the model that we are painting today is a special edition model. Uh, it was limited edition, so they only made, I think, 2,500 of them. Uh, and this is He-Man riding Battle Cat. So, uh, without further ado, I will go down to our table here and show you what we're working with. So here he is in all of his Eternian glory, uh, Mr. He-Man himself riding Sir Battle Cat. Uh, so this is going to be a super fun model to paint. Not only am I a ginormous uh, He-Man fan, as you could probably tell, from my He-Man book that I was reading, uh, which by the way, the page I was on, this is what, what would Skeletor do? The page that I was on, because I was actually looking at a page, was, hold on, hold on, it was this page right here, if you can see up here in the, in the top, and it says, if you don't have anything nice to say, say it in a strange whisper, then point and laugh. There's Prince Adam. Love it. Ooh, okay. Uh, so, I, um, I'm not going to waste a ton of time talking uh, during this little intro because uh, we have a lot of miniature to paint here. Um, I think the most challenging part of the miniature is going to be Battle Cat. Um, at least that's what I've been telling, <laughs> telling myself. Uh, so we're going to start with Battle Cat uh, because... Um, I want to. <laughs> um, I want to go ahead and get that green on there. Uh, it'll help me feel more confident about the rest of the model. Normally, I'd probably paint He-Man first, um, because I like to work from the inside out, uh, and He-Man is kind of the most, you know, I also really want to get this, um, this saddle that he's on, and I feel like I need to paint Battle Cat first. At least get a base coat on. Um... Let me get my trusty little thing. This week I totally meant to um, make something for the model to rest on so that it was a little easier for uh, you guys to see. And I didn't. So I'm going to use what I used last week, which was this, uh, this little kit, uh, hobby kit. And I'm jacking up all my paintbrushes here. Spilling them everywhere. Um, so I have this little paintbrush holder that kind of like holds them all in a row for me. And uh, I bumped it when I moved this here. I don't know. I got nothing. Alexa. Oh, my Alexa doesn't work. Or I would tell her to remind me to make... It looks like the Wi-Fi in your has changed. Thank you. I don't know if you can hear her. She's like, I don't know what you're talking about, human. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, I want to do a kind of a dark base uh, for it. So I'm going to use Wog Flesh, uh, Citadel Paint, pretty common, uh, green to start with. Uh, I thought about using my uh, Pro Acryls or maybe even my Reapers. Um, but depending on what you what you look at uh, as far as reference photos go. Battle Cat has different, tends to have different color, um, not different colored skin. He's always, he always has that uh, green fur, um, but he has a different, what is the word I'm looking for? Different shades of green, depending on what reference photo you look at. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this kind of this, uh, I don't wanna say bland green, but, uh, just to get a base on, and we'll definitely be highlighting that up. Um, yeah, to 
depending on how dark we want to make his fur. Uh, I'm kind of a fan of like the more brighter green, uh, which is the reference photo that I'm looking at. Um, I've been very excited to paint this miniature for a while. Um, I also have, uh, I also have uh, Skeletor on Panther, his uh, purple panther. Um, but I've actually already painted that miniature. Uh, so I'll actually show that a little later on, so make sure you stick around uh, to see that. As I've said many a time before on uh, stream, uh, whether you've seen me, uh, whether you were here last week for It's So Tiny, or whether you've seen me on Renegade streams, or you've seen my YouTube videos, um, A, I'm not a pro painter. I am intermediate, intermediate painter, uh, so there's going to be flaws in my painting, but my hope is that I will teach you uh, especially you beginners out there, how to kind of elevate to that next step uh, to becoming uh, more of an intermediate painter. So when you're in the early stages of painting um, a model, like I am here, obviously getting started with the base coat of, like the first base coat color, um... I don't really care if I mess up um, because it's just the base coat and we're just getting started. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Looks like we got Doug, aka Quail Man. Tony's here. <laughs> yeah, our buddy Quail Man is uh, he's currently... Uh, in the early stages of rehearsal for his own uh, School of Rock musical. He's playing the lead character, a.k.a. Jack Black, a.k.a. Dewey. So huge shout out to him. Make sure you congratulate him in the chat. Uh, very well earned, very well deserved. Even though he's slacking off watching us. <laughs> but we appreciate him being here. Yeah, this was definitely a smart move, starting with Battle Cat. Uh, he's significantly larger of an area uh, than painting Boba Fett like we did last week. Uh, Boba Fett was about the same size, but definitely less plastic. Uh, we got Atomic Ninja G up in the chat. to the music installing please wait what are you installing i have a program that plays the music and apparently it decided right now that it wanted to perform an update midstream that's awesome thank you thank you for that appreciate you
time that I did a commission, meaning, you know, somebody paid me to paint one of their miniatures, uh, which I haven't done in a very long time, but there was a little while there where everybody was, everybody I knew was having me paint their minis. Anyway, one of the first things that I was asked to paint was a, a guild ball team. Uh, it was the Brewers, I believe. Um, and uh, they wanted like a green Scottish kilt style uh, uniform on their team. And, uh, and green and yellows were the primary colors. And uh, while I found yellows to be particularly difficult to paint, I don't anymore. Um, I uh, I very much enjoyed painting the green. Uh, I've actually always wanted to paint orcs um, because I like green so much. So maybe one of these uh, streams for It's So Tiny, we will paint some orcs um, because I would find that very fun. Or at least paint a orc. Um... Uh, a little teaser for those in the uh, in the room in the chat. Uh, next week's uh, project, um, I will be doing some batch painting, kind of. Um, so I will be painting more than one miniature, and I won't tell you how many, but. Now you know. Now you know. Uh, so you can take five masters into battle. Who's on your team? Uh, just heroes, or are we talking villains too? Um, I can tell you right now that Man of Man at Arms is uh, for sure one of them. Uh, and Orko is one of them. Uh, so Man-at-Arms and Orko are for sure on the team. But I need to know if I can take villains uh, as well as heroes. Just heroes. Villains come later. Okay. Uh, so Man-at-Arms, Orko. Um... I feel like if I say He-Man, that's kind of cheesy. <laughs> I don't know. I think between Orko and Man-at-Arms, I don't know if we need anybody else. <laughs> I don't know if we need anybody else. I'm going to start working on the on the harness and the helmet. Uh, I'm going to use uh, Burnt Red by uh, Pro Acryl. And I really just want to get, again, I'm just looking for base colors at this point uh, to go onto the miniature. Um, so, been really liking uh, Pro Acryls. Not a fan of the black. Um... It's like my least favorite of the bunch. Um, but so far, everything else has been nice. Uh, I don't know if they're my favorite yet. I still need more time with them. I've only painted like two or three models with them so far. Um, what's the name of the guy with the wings? He's kind of like a bird. Stratos, is that his name? I think that's his name. Uh, he would be on my team as well. I think it's Stratos.
Yeah, Stratos. Um, so Stratos, uh, Man at Arms, Orko. Um, does Shira count? I feel like Shira would fill my He Man slot so that I don't sound cheesy that I've taken He Man. Uh, cause I quite like Shira. Um, I think she's wildly underrated. And she was a master, right? Maybe not, cause she's not from Eternia. <laughs> I guess she's a princess of power, huh? Alright, um... Do I want Fisto? I don't know if I want Fisto. Probably not. Probably not Fisto. I feel like he's kind of dull. I may have to switch to a smaller brush. I'm having to spend way too much energy staying inside the lines with this bigger brush on this strap underneath. I thought she didn't live in Eternia, though. I thought she lived in another realm universe thing. I thought it was like Etheria or something. I could be thinking of something completely different. This is taking an incredible amount of effort to stay inside the lines. So I'm just going to use the big brush to get the paint on the big surfaces and then switch to the little brush when I need to get smaller areas. Uh, because otherwise this will take me all day just to get base colors on. But I don't care if I mess up. I mean, I care, but I don't care. See, like I just totally got red on his green shoulder. She was kidnapped as a child by the Horde and taken to where they live. I really thought it was like Etheria or something like that. Switching to a smaller brush. If my daughter was down here, she would know because she knows all about Shira. Alright, so who we got so far? Man at Arms, Orko, Stratos. Ah, Ram Man. I'm taking Ram Man. I don't know why I didn't think of him earlier. And screw it. I'm taking He Man. Because this is my team. 
So He-Man, Orko, Man-at-Arms. I feel bad I don't have any... I don't have Tila or Sorceress. Yeah. Maybe I do want the Sorceress. All right. We'll do that. We'll do Sorceress, Orko, Man-at-Arms. So you've got two Magic Wielders, right? You've got Sorceress and Orko. Um, Sorceress and Orko. They're our magic users. Then we have Ram Man and Man at Arms, who are going to be our frontline defense. And then we have Stratos, who's going to cover the air. And that's our team. I feel like that's a solid team without He Man. That was a lot of brain power, by the way, to think of characters <laughs> in the He-Man universe. You know who I didn't think of, and now I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt, is past wielders of the Sword of Power. So, like... King Grayskull, and uh, I think Hero was one. I can't remember all of their names, but there was a bunch. Um, I didn't think of any of them. But that's alright. I'm sticking with my team. I think it's a good team. If I did decide to take He-Man, I would probably drop Ram-Man to replace He-Man. But, uh, again, don't... I think it's a little cheesy to take. The obvious. I mean, I guess it's a little cheesy to take the other obvious, um, which is the Sorceress. But there's only so many characters. And in this case, I just don't think Tila would do much. Especially not original Tila. Like, if we're taking Revelations Tila, which, if you have, if anyone out there has not watched He Man Revelations, the Kevin Smith uh, anima animated series that came on uh, Netflix you're really missing out because it was an incredible show. Um, but Tila was kind of a completely different character in that. Um, uh, not different. Evolved. Uh, she was a much more evolved and developed character. Um, she really had the spotlight for a lot of the show. And so they really gave her the opportunity to develop as a character. It wasn't just like the He-Man show, you know what I mean? It really was Masters of the Universe. It was not He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, which was 100% fine with me. It got uh, it got um, a lot of hate because He-Man's not in it as much as some people I think were expecting. Um, which is not to say he's not in it because he is. It's just not the He-Man show. It's the Masters of the Universe show. And uh, I thought it was incredible. It's not like taking Superman. I mean, Superman has a weakness. It's just a really hard weakness to get. But I feel like He-Man has emotional weakness. I feel like you mess with Lois and that would break him in a, in a way. It might piss him off and make things worse for you.
struggling around the mouth here because it's hard to see. It's hard to determine what is mouth and what is helmet. Uh, he, negative. He-Man would not beat <laughs> Superman. Yeah, Eternia is right across the bay from Metropolis, and they're going to fight to the death until He-Man says, you know, save, save Martha. And Superman says, wait, that's your mother's name? Let's be best friends. Wait, when has he legit beat Superman? Why do I not know about this? I didn't even know they fought. It's a comic book thing. Oh, like a what if story. Muhammad Ali beat Superman. Are we serious? I mean, I'm not like a huge Superman fan. In fact, I don't like Superman at all as a superhero. Um, I just think he's like the cheat code to superhero-ness there's not much if anything can beat it uh, can beat Superman um, so I've always just looked at that as like man that's kind of cheesy um, so I guess that means I think Superman is cheesy I know people who love Superman they love that whole you know what peace justice in the American way is that Is that his saying? I don't know. This is a great color as a base for this, uh, for this armor, by the way. It is just looking really good in person. That's a great start to Battle Cat. Uh, his skin is super dark, but we're going to lighten that up. Just putting a little bit of green over that boo-boo we made. Okay, this music is not great. Next. Next. I don't know what station was playing the other day. And it was like... Was it this one? Let's try this one. I'm feeling something upbeat. Thursday. We do need some Thundercats minis. I'm sure I could probably find some on Etsy. 
that I can have 3D printed, maybe. I'll have to try and think, remember to look that up. Um, but, but obviously it wouldn't be for... I don't know of any official game that comes with minis. But I would paint the crap out of some Thundercats. Panthro was always my favorite Thundercat. So I'd love to paint a Panthro miniature. Also really always liked Wily Kit and Wily Cat. And of course we can't forget about all of our first crushes, which would be Chitara. And if you tell me that you didn't have a crush on Chitara, then I would call you a liar. right in the miniature's wet spot. Oh, He-Man would crush Lion-O. I mean, I give Lion-O a lot of credit as a young leader, but... He got all of his power from Sword of Omen. I mean, I shouldn't say that, because technically Adam did. He got all of his power from a sword, too. Yeah. Big facts. All right, let's see. What do I want to paint next? Hmm. I mean, I guess we can start painting He-Man. I guess. Uh, I want to let that green dry a little bit. Uh, and then I'm going to put a wash on it. And we'll start... Uh, we'll start... Making it purdy. Uh, my go-to flesh tone is Cadian flesh tone. It is my favorite. So we're going to use that for... He-Man skin. Once I shake up my my stuff here. You always saw the sword as a conduit, huh? You should write to Kevin Smith so he can use that as a line in the, sh in the show. <laughs> a kid, a kid.
Yeah, I mean, if 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 Adam can't turn into He Man, then Lionel would. I mean, that wouldn't even be a fight. <laughs> Especially not original series, Adam. Um, I have not painted a Transformer. I've painted uh, G.I. Joes and Power Rangers, but I have not painted a Transformer yet. However, um, I do have a few unpainted Transformer miniatures. So, um, some time ago, I don't remember how long ago, so I'll just say some time ago, um, WizKids who makes Dungeons and Dragons miniatures um, released a line of uh, unpainted Transformer miniatures. Um, they weren't for anything specific. They're not for a game or anything like that. Because um, to my knowledge, there is no official um, Transformer miniatures game yet. Um, and so I bought the first wave of those and they're sitting over on my shelf unpainted and ready to be painted um and i looked at them today actually and they are something on my radar to paint here on it's so tiny so definitely stay tuned for that because it is coming eventually um i have four i think there's four if i'm not mistaken they did two waves i bought all of wave one and i don't think i ever picked up as a matter of fact, I know I didn't pick up Wave 2. Um, I don't even remember which which Transformers were in Wave 2. Um, so I'll have to pick those up as well. Uh, wave 1 was Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Megatron, and um, Starscream. Uh, so those are the ones I have. I may not have picked up, um, I may not have picked up Wave 2 because the miniatures weren't interesting to me, the characters weren't. I really don't remember who they are, I'd have to go and look. Um, the scale I believe is 28 millimeter, but because they are giant robots, um, you know, they are two scale, so they are significantly bigger than most miniatures I've seen. I'll go get them off my shelf in a minute and I'll just show you and then you can see. Because I can do that, right? My show, I can do whatever I want. I was like, I literally just like rinsed my brush from the red I was using. 
um, so that I could go back to the skin color. And then I just dipped it right back in the red. Silly, silly rabbit. Man, this music is failing me today. The other day when I was using this app to play music, I think it was during my Renegade stream, it was playing this awesome, like, retro video game music. And, uh, because it's just random, non-copyrighted music, right? Because that's all we can play on on Twitch. Um, and yeah, I, I, I wish I could get that back because that was great. All right, I'll be back in two seconds with my Transformers miniatures. cool would these be to paint? So there's Optimus and there is Megatron. So to give you perspective, here is Boba Fett from last week. And here's a Robotech miniature. So, significantly larger. Um, but they're super cool. And I would 1,000% paint them on stream. And I have four of them. Maybe I'll buy the other ones. Depending on if you can even still find them anymore. Or they are of interest. Not just to me, but to you as well. Because... Uh, you guys have to watch me paint them. <laughs> I'm just looking up a reference picture of He-Man really quick here. I want to make sure I get the color of his boots and his... Yeah, so it's just a regular brown. Let's see. Do I have any browns I like from Light Umber? Do we like Light Umber? 
I feel like it's a reddish brown though. Yeah, it's like a reddish brown. I think I'm gonna go Mornfrag brown here. Mornfrang. Uh, Mornfang brown is a reddish brown uh, by Citadel. It's um, it's really kind of uh, a great color, to be honest. Um, and it, it, I think it'll be perfect for his loincloth and his boots. You would 1,000% watch that. Well, that's good. Because um, that's definitely on the list. And it's on the short list, so it'll be definitely sooner rather than later. Like, I would almost paint them next week if I didn't already have something picked out. But I'm, I'm excited about next week's uh, batch painting. I call it batch painting, but it's not really batch painting because the miniatures that I'm going to be painting are different. And usually batch painting indicates you're painting the same exact miniature, but multiple in the same time. Uh, these are different. They're not largely different, which is why um, I'm going to be doing them together. So I don't want to say batch painting and make people think that I'm going to be painting like 20 Space Marines or something like that, because that's not happening. I would totally paint Space Marines on stream and i probably will at some point paint space marines on stream um because space marines are wildly popular and uh, it would bring more people into into the stream for sure but when i paint space marines i will be painting like characters or captains or something like that i'm not gonna paint just regular uh, marine soldiers um, because I've painted so many of them in the past that um, it makes my brain hurt just thinking about it wave 2 was RC and Soundwave was that it? was it just those two? 
I would definitely get that. Soundwave is one of my favorites. I may have, honestly, I may have not gotten them because I haven't painted the, the first ones yet. Um, RC, I mean, that's, that's whatever. But Soundwave is one of my favorites for sure. Yeah, without a game to support the kind of the characters coming out, there wasn't a lot of interest to buy them because people were like, what am I going to do with them now that I've purchased them? But I would buy them. I did buy them. Oh, you can't get five of the six anymore. That's a bummer. What's the one you can get? Let me guess. One of the ones I already have. Starscream. Because no one wants Starscream. They may be on eBay for not super expensive. You have to get RC. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, if I buy the other ones, then I'll definitely buy RC. I'm not, I'm a completionist, so. Excuse me. The fact that there's only six uh, makes it a much uh, easier purchase because I know you're a lot like me and you'll want all of them. If you can't have them all, then you don't want any. And I know that because you and I are the same person. I'm going to use uh, this Chuck Hero uh, orange for uh, the bracers and the belt. Again, just keep in mind right now we're just focusing on base colors. Uh, and so this is the color that I want to use.
this music is definitely more my speed than the other music that's been playing all night. So, not including He-Man, and not including Transformers or G.I. Joe, because G.I. Joe, the game already exists, and uh, He-Man, the game already exists, and we're 95% confident that we are going to get a Transformer game sooner or later from Renegade, since they own the IP and they've made a G.I. Joe game and a... Uh, Power Ranger game already. Uh, so not counting those properties that I just mentioned. What would... Um, what is the one 80s genre you would like to see a board game of? Like if you could bring any board game to life, what would it be? Not board game, you know what I mean. I'm going to use Dawnstone for the, let's see, I think his shield and his chest armor are the same color. Gray, if I'm not mistaken. Can I not find a picture of his dang shield? Hello, shield? No, I'm not going to. He just doesn't use his shield very much. And all these screen captures, he's not using his dang shield. Hello, where's your shield, buddy? It's a toy. All the gray plastic on the toys were the same. Seriously, there is not a single... Oh, there it is. Let's see. You know what? It's my miniature, and I say they're the same. We need to use Dawnstone. 80s only. Yep. Uh, can't be Ninja Turtles either, because there's already a Ninja Turtles board game recent Ninja Turtles board game that has like miniatures and stuff um, there's actually two and I own both I've never played either though go figure Tony can't be Ninja Turtles. Thundercats, huh? I mean, if, it, if there was a system that I would like to, if there was a game, if I could have any game added to the Guardian system, which is the gaming system, which is the system that uh, Heroes of the Grid and the new uh, G.I. Joe game are going to use, so they'll be cross-compatible, and we assume, again, we're only assuming, it hasn't been officially announced, um, that the upcoming, or the assume, <laughs> the assumed... Um, uh, Transformer game will be uh, also cross-compatible using the same system, then I would also say Ninja Turtles. I think that I would like to see Ninja Turtles added to that system so that I can have Power Rangers 
Transformers, G.I. Joes, and Ninja Turtles all in the same system, all cross-compatible. But if that's not possible and I have to have a game that is not Ninja Turtles or any of the other ones I mentioned, I don't know if it would be Thundercats for me. Um, honestly, it might be... Hmm. I should have had my own answer ready before I asked the question. I feel like it's a loaded question. There's so many out there, like... So you mentioned it would only be a one to three wave game. Yeah, I mean... I, I mean, I think it would be the same as, um, I think it would be the same as, uh, like, He-Man. Uh, the two board games that are currently being ma made for He-Man uh, by Archon and uh, Cool Minis. Um, I, I think they're going to be one, I personally think they're going to be one and done games. Um, I don't think that we will see expansions beyond what's already being released. Um, especially the one from Cool Minis, because they've already literally released every single character in the He-Man universe with the Kickstarter. So, I mean, unless they were to change gameplay elements and give us different sculpts, um, I don't think there'll be any support for the game once it comes out. But, it's only a board game, right? So it's not... It's not like this big universe like Power Rangers, for example. Whereas, where with Power Rangers, you know, Renegade is going to keep giving us expansions for a long, long time because there's tons of source material. Um, He-Man, the world is just not that big beyond what they could do to entice people to do this big, huge Kickstarter. Um, I, I feel like Fields of Eternia, which is the game for the miniature that I'm painting now. Um, I think it'll be the same way. I don't think that there'll be any support for the game once the game comes out. I think... Um, um, I think it's going to be a one and done. However, um, for those that don't know, Archon is also releasing a uh, He-Man... Um, they're also releasing a He-Man uh, skirmish game. Um, and that game, I foresee them... Uh, actually, it's already out. Although I have not gotten my shipping notification yet, which makes me sad. Um, oh dear, what was I saying? I keep like losing my train of thought. Um, oh, I think that when that skirmish game comes out... I think that it will be, um, supported, at least for a little while. So we are picking, yeah, so what 80s properties would you add to the Guardian system? I mean, Ninja Turtles counts in that case. I'm going to use uh, Wild Rider Red from Citadel. It's kind of an orangey red. I'm going to use that for the inside of the shield. Again, I'm just trying to get base colors on, uh, which we are almost done with. And then we're going to start doing washes and uh, kind of go from there. In all honesty, I probably should have done this. Uh, orange before I did the the gray on the shield. Um, that's all right.
Uh, I'm not worried about painting the red on his chest um, because that is something that I will add later. That's that's a detail that I will add later. Uh, I will clean up the shield a little bit. Now for the hair. Hmm. Blonde hair can be tricky. Honestly, I think we start with an orange. Like the orange we use. And then we kind of build up the, the blonde from there. I should make a Tuesday tip video about painting blonde hair because um, it can be tricky and there's a few different techniques you can do uh, like the one I'm doing now. Uh, what is a Tuesday tip? Oh, I'm, th I'm so glad that you asked. Um, so uh, up there at the top of the screen, you can see all of my socials. Um, please go and follow them, like them, do all of that stuff. Um, I put out content every single day on my socials. Um, community spotlights, um, fun TikToks, um, uh, pictures of things that I've painted. Um, you're welcome to ask me questions and interact with me on all those socials. Um, TikTok has quickly become my biggest. Um, I try and make fun videos, uh, painting related, but using trends that are, um, on the rest of TikTok. So I, I hope to continue to do those. Um, after my streams, I upload, uh, the videos of the streams to my YouTube, which is also up there on the screen. And, uh, every Tuesday I put out a tip video. Uh, it's a 60 second video that just teaches you a very uh, quick um, and, in my opinion, useful um, painting tips. Uh, so yeah, so go and do that thing. And I said I was not going to paint that thing on his chest, but I think I'm going to. Because I know me, and if I don't do it, it's going to drive me crazy because it's going to be the only thing on him that should be painted that is not. Way too much water. Well, I'm going to have to redo that because uh, it looks like poop. Yep, looks like poop. All right, uh, and then I'm going to grab some silver for his sword. Uh, I'm going to use Pro Acryl Silver for that. And then uh, we are going to start doing some, some shading so that we can then do some highlighting so that we can then then do some hopefully some blending and some more highlighting and then we can do even more highlighting my brushes are failing me today Oh man, I love the real Ghostbusters. Oh, somebody mentioned Voltron. I didn't even think about Voltron. Voltron versus Megazord? 
Yes, please. Uh, this is just silver from Pro Acryl, what I'm using now. Um, it's a nice bright silver. Honestly, you could use any silver, it really doesn't matter. That's He-Man. Thanks, everybody. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Not even close. I have not done the uh, inside of his mouth yet. I do realize that. Um, and that's okay. I wasn't a big mask guy. Captain Planet, for sure. That'd be cool. It'd be cool to just honestly, like, don't, you don't even have to, um, like, you don't even have, like, they could do things where, like, if they got all of these 80s properties, you could just release, like, one small expansion. Like, with Voltron, you just release Voltron. That's it. Um, and that would be the pack. And it would just come with rules that allows you to introduce it to the system. The same thing with, like, Ghostbusters. You have, like, two packs. One pack is, like, Stay Puff and Slimer, and then the other pack is, like, the four Ghostbusters, and then that's it. Um, I think that that would be a super cool way of doing it. Which G just said the same thing, which, uh, of course he did, because we're the same person. Um, I have covered up the red that I did on the chest because uh, one ghost pack and one proton pack. Uh, pun intended, right? No pun intended. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with our washes because that's going to take a hot minute to, uh, to dry. Actually... Before I do that, um, before I do that, I am going to um, grab a different green. I'm going to try this warp stone green, um, and I'm going to put a little bit of this on Battle Cat to brighten it up, and then that way when I put the wash on it and it dulls it down, it's going to be uh, closer to the color that I want if that makes sense. Got way more on my palette than I wanted, but that's okay.
So I don't know if anybody here watches basketball. Uh, I am a huge Celtics fan. They lost last night, putting them down 3-2 to two in the series against the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, so one more loss, and they are out. Uh, their next game is tomorrow in Milwaukee, and I made the conscious decision today that I am not going to watch the game. It is too stressful, and uh, I haven't watched Grey's Anatomy in two days because I watched basketball last night, and tonight I'm streaming. So I am going to spend the evening with my wife and my daughter watching Grey's Anatomy. I'm not even going to look at my phone. I'm just going to trust that the Celtics will not fail me, and if they win, which I hope they do, then I will watch Game 7. And if they don't win, at least I'll be slightly less disappointed because I won't have spent all night watching the game. Instead, I'll have watched Meredith Grey do something stupid again because she always does. Um, yeah. And that is what I'm going to do uh, tomorrow. So, yeah. The hardest part will be not looking up the score on my phone. Um, or just pausing the show to turn it on. Um, I do have alerts that alert me on my phone. Uh, if for some reason, like, I get an alert that says, you know, the game is tied, it's going into overtime, um, that would really entice me to turn it on. Uh, and in that case, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll just turn off notifications on my phone. <sighs> yeah. Spoilers, you already knew Meredith Grey was, always does stupid stuff. What is that? Did y'all hear that? That was awesome. AJ Pieri, my boy Anthony, thank you so much for the donation. Look at that. And look, I can, I gotta make it bigger. Let's see, I can make it bigger. Look at that. That is our first donation. I, I can't tell you how much that means to me. That's so exciting. And, and I really do appreciate it. Um, trying to make it bigger on my thing, because... Look at that. Man, I'm so happy. Thank you so much. That's so cool. Um, I like how it like was like... And then it showed up on the screen. Hopefully it came up on the screen for you guys. I gotta be honest, I like how this looks without me. Um, without me even putting the wash on it, but uh, I'm going to because I said I was, so. And now I can put a wash on everything else. Let me uh, make that a little clearer so you can see kind of where I'm going with the uh, with the muscles and stuff. Yeah. 
<laughs> now you know that um now that you, now you know that she makes it to series seven it's called gray's anatomy they don't chair it change it to derek's anatomy of course she makes it to series seven she's probably on it till all the way to the end i mean i guess technically they could have her have a kid and then time jump and then she dies and it's about her kid That is entirely possible. Yeah, the base has built-in terrain. So um, here is Skeletor. I said I was going to show it off. Um, so here's Skeletor, which I've already painted. And you can see it already has that built-in terrain base. Um, I just added, once I painted it, I added, the, added some tufts on there, which I will on he-man as well so that it looks just as dynamic but yeah that's um that's uh skeletor and i can't wait to see what he-man ends up like not too much longer all right so i'm gonna get some of this uh bale tan green it's a green uh, German Grey's Anatomy. Ha 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 You're so funny. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I'm gonna grab some of this green, uh, wash here. And I'm gonna put it all over, uh, all over Battle Cat. Uh, I want to be careful because I don't want to get it, uh, really on the red or any of the other stuff and really I'm I'm mostly doing this um, because I want to fill in any spots that I missed uh, with some uh, with some green here this is not super important and uh, I may actually even regret it when I'm done because uh, I was kind of liking the way that that turned out but uh, or that that was turning out. But it's also going to brighten up the green a bit. Which is what we want. I don't want a super dark battle cat. Uh, and he was he was looking kind of dark to me. Another reason that you need to be careful when putting on a wash, especially if you're using a big brush like I am, is um, if you slop it around, it kind of like splashes and then you'll end up getting uh, paint in places you do not want paint, if that makes sense. I'm just going around finding places where it's pooling really bad and kind of uh, soaking it up with uh, with a dry uh, a dry uh, brush all right and now
Yeah, that's why they call washes uh, like magic juice when it comes to painting. Because even even if you just lay base colors down, and then and then do what I'm doing with the with that, and then stop, your your miniatures are gonna look ten times better. You don't even have to do much else beyond that. You know what I mean? Uh, so now, like you're about to even see it now with. I'm going to use this Racklin Flesh Shade. Uh, it's for skin, but I'm going to... It's like a brownish red. Uh, I'm going to put it on Battle Cat's armor as well. Uh, I'm going to use a smaller brush because He-Man is smaller than Battle Cat. And I'm going to put it all over his skin. And you can already start to see like his muscles pop. Look at that. Like, look at... Look at like the arm. And then look at the chest. So even if I do nothing else to the miniature after this, it's just going to look so good. Um, when I first started painting miniatures, I didn't even know about washes. Um, I didn't know about Nuln Oil. I didn't know about any of that stuff. And uh, I went to a friend's house to play board games, and um, he said, "Hey, man, you should." We had, we had our miniatures, and I was painting pretty decent by then. But again, I didn't know about the null oil and stuff. And he was like, "You should, you should put some washes on your miniatures to make them pop a bit more." And I was like, "What the heck's a wash?" This was way back when. And uh, and he gave me like a half used bottle of null oil and he was like here take this home and try it and uh ever since then i've been addicted now i will say that many many pro painters do not use um uh, do not use washes uh they will actually if you watch like youtube videos and stuff like that they will tell you don't use washes um, because it's, it's kind of like the cheat code of the painting world, right? Um, and they're like, if you want to improve and you want to get better at painting, you want to, you know, learn how to do layering and, and all that stuff. You know what I mean? Um, which I, I understand, but for someone like me, um, especially somebody who's, uh, working on uh, learning how to uh, how to do those things still, right? I'm still learning how to do layering properly. I'm still learning how to do um, uh, what is it called? Not layering. What's the other technique that I'm learning now? Uh, blending. Like I'm trying to learn blending. I'm trying to learn uh, those skills, and until I do, I still want my miniatures to look cool, and, uh, and I think that you achieve that, or you can achieve that with, um, with the magic juice. And, you know, it takes some patience to... Uh, to use the magic juice because and I say patience because while it is very easy to just slap it on and go about your business if you're like me and you want to do um, layers and you want to do highlights um, you essentially need to go over everything that you just did um, so it's like double the time to paint a miniature so it's not just a cheat code The only thing I'm not going to put it on is the sword. Ooh. I was, I don't know if you guys could see that up here. I almost dumped 
the pot of uh, the pot of wash all over the place. Let me move that out of my finger range. Uh, I have done it before. I think everybody that's ever used wash, um, especially if you've used it a lot like I have, has spilled. It is not a good time when you spill, uh, but it does happen, and you just got to move on, <laughs> clean it up, move on. Yeah, I think washes, I, I, I think for somebody to just say, don't use something, like, contrast paints are kind of a cheat code too, but, it, you know, in the right hands, you can do so many things with washes and inks and glazes and, you know, all those things. You don't have to just use paint and a brush, and I think all of them just add something to your toolkit, you know what I mean? It's all about just having the right stuff in your toolkit. Uh, let me look, make sure that the wash got everywhere. Looks like it did. Um, so now we have to let that dry. While we let it dry, I figure we can go ahead and do, uh, or start working on the inside of his mouth and maybe work on the base a little bit. Uh, looking at the base. Yeah, let's go ahead and do the work, start working on the inside of the mouth. Um, to do that, you know what? I'm gonna use Lead Belcher. Um, it's a darker silver than the one that's on there. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the sword, let it sit, and then highlight with that other silver. Um, because I just don't, it's just too, a little too bright, and there's not going to be much I can do highlighting-wise if I don't darken it up first. So, Sword of Power, you are going to be a little... Not much darker. But a little darker. All right. Good job. Good job, buddy. All right. Uh, inside of the mouth. Let's set him down so y'all can see him. He's blurry, but that's okay. Uh, inside of the mouth, we're going to use two of my favorite inside the mouth colors. Screamer Pink and Pink Horror. Uh, Screamer Pink I always use uh, for the inside of the mouth um, as kind of like a base. And then the tongue, uh, I will go with the lighter pink. Uh, and it really contrasts well uh, most of the time. And hopefully it does uh, for this as well. I don't see why it won't. You know what else I need to do is look at a picture of Battle Cat and see if his paws, like the underside of his paws, are um, are are <laughs> um, are green, or if they're a different color. Oh my gosh, I've looked at so many pictures of He-Man. I need a good picture of Battle Cat. I mean, I. I guess they can be whatever I want, right? Are there are no pictures of Battle Cat. Or Cringer, even. I'm imagining that his. Ugh, that's so frustrating.
You know what I mean? Like the pads of his paws. Let that dry for a second while I Google Battle Cat on my phone. <laughs> Battle Cat. Is it one word or two words? I think it's like one word. Images. Okay, dude, can we just see the freaking paws? No, apparently we cannot. You know what? I'm going to paint them whenever I want. That's what I'm going to do. Because there are no good pictures of his paws. Uh, okay. So now I'm going to use that pink horror for the tongue. Hopefully it's dry in, in his mouth. That'll dry nicely. Uh, I'm going to grab my Dawnstone now and my big brush, my big er brush. I'm going to start going ahead and putting color down on the rocks while we still let that other stuff dry. Um, because this is also going to take some Nuln Oil to get color, get some uh, nice contrast in there uh, since it is just a bunch of rocks and stuff. And I'm pretty sure this is what I did. I hope this is what I did um, for Skeletor because I want the bases to be similar, uh, like they're fighting in the same area. And I, I, I've painted him a very long time ago, probably last summer is when I painted him. Uh, Skeletor. So. It was definitely before. Um, July. Um, because I remember showing the person who gave the miniature to me. In person. Uh, and he was here in July. So. So. 
Anyway, it, the, the moral of that story is it's been a hot minute since I painted that mini. Uh, so I hope that I'm painting this base the same way I painted that base, or it might look a little weird. But this is kind of like my standard go-to for rocks. Uh, sometimes I will paint them uh, with Mechanicus Standard Gray first, and then dry brush. But with these miniatures, because they are fixed, um, and I'm having to paint around uh, other things, I probably didn't do that. Um, in order for me to do that, I would have had to have done the rocks first. Which means I would not have been able to... Uh, I would have really had to have taken my time on the miniature because I would not have wanted to get any of the paints from the mini onto the base. I apologize, I'm not talking much. I'm trying to focus on not getting any of this gray on any of the green that I've already painted because that would be bad. I mean, not like end of the world bad, but it would not make me a very happy camper. Why do people say that, happy camper? Where does that come from? Where does that saying derive from? I wonder. I mean, it infers that it's bad to be an unhappy camper. I mean, I guess it would be bad to be an unhappy camper. But what defines an unhappy camper? I don't know what defines an unhappy camper. Now let's switch to my smaller brush now because I'm getting dangerously, dangerously close to the inside of the mini. Need to find some more Dawnstone. Yeah, if anybody can let me know what, what they believe defines an unhappy camper, I'd be interested to know. I mean, if it's raining outside, are you unhappy? If you can't get your fire started, are you unhappy? I believe it's a camper that's not happy. So is that saying that no campers are happy? Like, in general, 
campers are unhappy. And if that's true, then why camp? to my face for a second, seeing if I missed any spots. glutton for punishment. I mean, I have been camping many, many times in my life. Um, one time I went camping for an entire year. Uh, which is a story for another day. Um, and I, I, I don't think that I was always unhappy all right um so i'm gonna let that gray dry now that that's on there and i'm going to start working on battle cat's skin skin fur uh i'm just gonna start highlighting it back up See, so yeah, I don't think that um, I was always unhappy. I mean, of course, there were moments where I was unhappy. Uh, like, you know, when you have to clean out the toilet. The septic toilet. That's never fun. Assuming you're camping in an RV.
Um, also, I am not being... Uh, I don't necessarily... I believe it's a camper that's not happy. Oh, you already said... I already said that. Um, I'm not being like... I, I don't necessarily want to completely finish all of the fur. Um, because we do have to paint on his stripes. Which will be... Interesting. Um, yeah, that'll be interesting. That's all I'll say about that. All right. Um, I'm going to move on to what I think will be the most difficult part of the model. And I'm going to do that next um, because I think it will take the most time. Um, and that is the stripes on Battle Cat. Um, so unlike Panther, um, Battle Cat has stripes. And um, unlike some models... The stripes on Battle Cat are not predominant on the model, which means that the people who created the model did not put the stripes on there for me to just fill in. So I'm going to have to freehand them. So, buckle up. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to get Newell Noyle. Neil Noyle, and I'm going to put Neil Noyle um, over the base now that that looks dry to me so that the Neil Noyle can dry. Again, just being careful around uh, the fur of Battle Cat because I don't want to get um, I don't want to get Null Noil on Battle Cat because um, I'm pretty happy with the color of his skin right now. God, why do I keep calling it skin? It's not skin. It's fur. Fur. I 
I think I keep saying skin because I'm not used to uh, painting animals. I painted like a dog character, dog human character or whatever on Power Rangers. Two different ones actually. Um, but yeah, okay. That looks pretty good. It looks very similar to uh, Skeletor. So I'm pretty sure I got it right. Okay, now I need to pick, I should have done this beforehand. I need to decide what color yellow uh, I want to do. Yellow is an extremely difficult colored paint. Um, I do need to try and find a picture of Battle Cat. There he is. Um, one good thing about Battle Cat is that his stripes are not like tiger stripes. So they're not, um, they're not necessarily perfect like things. Perfect stripes, not things. Okay, Battle Cat images. Here we go. Oh, those look like lightning bolts, some of them. He's got a lot on his tail. Yeah, so I mean, it really just depends what you look at. They're not um, super bright. Um, so. I'll probably do some Averland Sunset with a tiny bit of purple. Um, this is a trick that I uh, recently learned. Uh, I used it last uh, week when I painted Boba Fett and it worked very, very well. So uh, I'm gonna do it again. And you only need like a microscopic bit of purple. Um, obviously, the more purple you add, the darker your color yellow is going to get. So I'm going to try and use the tiniest of purples. And that was way too much purple. But... Okay, here we go. This is a terrible picture. I get some. By the way, I have no idea what I'm doing.
That probably looks terrible. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. Guess I just need to keep going now. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to also kind of make them a little random. You know what I mean? Um, because the tiger stripes are not perfect. The color is definitely good. Hey, we got a follow. Look at that. Kitty 66717. Thanks for the follow. Really appreciate it. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the It's So Tiny family. Uh, you missed me terribly drawing lines on Battle Cat here. I'm going to have to go over them uh, to brighten them up in a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and keep working on his skin now that the stripes are there. I guess they don't look too, too bad. Maybe they'll look better when I uh, brighten the skin up a little bit. I do like the color choice. Uh, like I said, it's a little bit of purple and uh, some of that Averland sunset. Um, I'm going to get some more warp stone glow. Not a ton. I feel like Battle Cat himself is almost done. At least um, his fur. Oh, you also missed that we got a new follower. Welcome, Kitty66717.
Hey, hey, welcome. Thanks. Uh, I think it looks pretty good so far, too. Uh, the stripes were uh, challenging. Um, I not I don't a thousand percent like them, but they're pretty good. Uh, they certainly don't look bad. Uh, Battle Cat himself is looking awesome. I'm going to grab... Oh, German Grey. Because we can't have a model without German Grey. Uh, and his, uh, uh, we're going to paint his, uh, his claws because his claws are actually, uh, dark. Uh, they're not bone color like a lot of, uh, claws on characters tend to be. His claws are, uh, a dark color probably supposed to be black, but I had to find something to use German Grey on. Skeletor has commanded you to take Castle Grayskull. He's giving you five evil warriors to do it. Um, are the villains in the uh, live action movie legal for this exercise um, because I believe all but one um, are only in the movie I don't think any of them are actual cartoon I think the only one that is other than Evil Inn I think the only other one that is uh, in the cartoons is Beastman uh, who I will obviously be taking. Evil Inn and Beastman. Uh, but if I can take Blade from the movie, I'm taking him too. Because uh, he was my favorite. <laughs> he just looked cool. So yeah, I'm taking Blade, Evil Inn. Um... Beast Man, Stinkor, um, and Lockjaw. I'm sorry, Trapjaw. Lockjaw is a dog in the Marvel Universe. <laughs> that was faster. Yeah, that's because I've been thinking about it for an hour and a half since you asked the last question and said that, spoiler alert, you were going to ask this one. So I kind of had an advantage this time. 
Um, plus, I've always been more of a fan of villains in anything than I have been the heroes. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I like more he more villains in He-Man than I do... Um, main characters. You know, main, uh, main good guys. Let's properly switch it up. Merman. Next. Oh, why? Um, Merman would lure Ram Man to the water, and Merman, or Ram Man being the big boy that he is, would fall into the water, and let's face it, he can't swim, um, and he would drown. I feel like that was an easy one. Because there's just no way Ram Man can swim. Triclops and Tila. Um, what powers did Triclops have? I mean, I know he had the extra eye, but did he have any, like, advantage in combat? I feel like Tila wins that hands down. Triclops is kind of lame. He's an inventor. Yeah, I mean, I guess he could invent something to beat Tila. But could he do it fast enough? Could he do it faster than Tila could counter it? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like Tila is quick and can think on her feet. And I just don't think that 
Triclops would have anything to deal with her quick enough. And I'm not sure if he had some laser eye thing. Yeah, maybe, but I just think Tila's too quick. Uh, quick thinking, quick on her feet. Stratos is my guy. I know you want a Y, but <laughs> he just is. Like, I don't... I don't know if you knew this, but I have a thing for birds and things that fly. Um, by the way, if while I'm painting, I don't mention what color I'm using, it's because I'm using a, like, one of the color, like, right now I'm painting with red. I'm just using the uh, original red that I used, which was the, um, uh, the one, the, the Pro Acryl uh, red that I was using earlier. Um, so it's not because I'm not wanting to tell you, it's just because... Uh, I haven't changed up any colors. Stinkor and Roboto. I like Stinkor a lot because um, I just think he's a super cool character. Um, Roboto's cool too, though. That's a tough one. That's the toughest one you've asked. Um, man, they're both cool characters. I mean, I guess Roboto is cooler by a little bit. And now I'm only going by cool factor, not by who would actually win in a fight. Because um, I feel like it's He-Man, so the good guys literally always win. Um... Yeah, I don't feel like Skeletor and his crew really ever have much of a chance. <laughs> Mortal Kombat style. Um, Alright, if it's Mortal Kombat style, then I'm giving it to Stinkor. Because he would have, like, some gas bomb that would, like, come out of his butt. And, uh, well, I guess it's a damn robot, so the robot probably doesn't smell it. Damn you and your questions. You're impossible to answer questions. Yeah, I, I guess I give it to Roboto because, um, you know, Stinkor, his, his abilities um, would be based around smell. And since Roboto is a robot, he would just not be able to smell 
he wouldn't be able to smell the stank. What else you got? Don't stop now. Maybe your kid woke up. Manny faces and Beast Man. Uh, Beast Man, just because of that raw animal instinct, I feel like he would like unleash like some inner rage or something like that that would be too much for Manny faces to handle. Um, I feel like he would just go like like super saiyan beast mode his hair would all like stand up and change colors and he'd be like super beast man level two or level three and he would just keep getting stronger and stronger as the fight went on he would take hits and then that would just make him go even deeper into a blind rage <laughs> yeah, exactly. Beast Man over 9,000. Man, man at arms. Man at arms. In my opinion, man at arms. I mean, this this could be a whole debate, unto itself. But especially, especially since um, the release of Revelations, in my opinion, man at arms is the best character in Masters of the Universe. Um, he just has such a good story. Um, again, especially since Revelations came out, and we got to see, I mean, I'm not gonna say anything, cause spoilers, and I don't know if everybody's seen it, um, but, man, 
he just has such a cool story. I think he's the best character. Maybe he's not the best fighter, although I think he is. Um, you know, he he trained He-Man, kind of. And, um, I mean, without Man-at-Arms, I don't think He-Man would have always been as successful as he was. I just think he's the most interesting character. I don't think that I don't think the beast man's strength would be too much for man at arms to handle. I think he could handle the strength and ultimately use his military experience to I mean I really I think the only people in the in the in the universe that he would struggle with is magic users. Like I think man at arms could go toe to toe with He Man in a fight. I do. I don't necessarily think he'd win, but he would definitely give He-Man a run for his money, I think. Just my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. I didn't know that he had a Hulkbuster style suit. I don't know if I know who Whiplash is, to be honest with you. I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, this bold red um, to that other red. What was that other red I was using? 
burnt red uh, to kind of um, brighten it up a little bit uh, for my highlights. I'm going to combine the two together. Dinosaur guy with the oh, um, um, I'm not super familiar with him. I know who he is, so I'm gonna have to give this one to Fisto. Uh, giant fist, uh, can smash through anything. I mean, what else is there really to say? He'll block the club tail with his giant fist and then punch you in the face. Skeletor versus Hordak? That's not even a fair question. That is not even a fair question. <sighs> Skeletor is literally like my favorite. Like villain of all time. Ugh, but Hordak is super powerful. You know what? I think I'm going to give it to... I think I'm going to give it to Skeletor, and here's why. I feel like Skeletor is more resourceful. And I feel like Skeletor will never give up. Like, I feel like he's never going to throw in the towel. Um, and if he gets tired or he feels like he's going to get beat, he will take a break and throw his minions in while he rests up and does whatever it is he needs to do to get back into the fight. I'm giving this one to my boy, Skeletor. 
Surprise, surprise. But I feel like my argument is legit. Evelyn versus Orko. I feel like you're just uh, Mortal Kombat style. I mean, Evelyn. Because how many times have we seen Orko's magic fail or blow up in his face? And I just, I mean, when it's on the line, he always comes through, but what if what if he just gets that moment where he can't come through? You know what I mean? And I feel like that doesn't really happen to Evelyn. So I think from a from a strictly like magic standpoint, I just feel like she's more reliable. It's funny how this is so much fun and evil at the same time. I feel like these questions are evil. Are you like keeping score? Like, are you taking the winners of the things that I'm saying and then like pitting the winners against each other? On to the next level. Wait till you see what I'm going to paint next time. You'll be able to really do this next time. Because the universe that I'm painting in next time has so many characters. It's a little ridiculous. Way more, in my opinion, than Masters of the Universe. Memorable characters, I should say. Maybe not. Maybe around the same amount, but way more, like, memorable characters. Where it's just going to be, like, impossible to pick stuff. Then we can have like a real, real battle of the bads. I don't know why I said bads. Because it's not bad. All right, I think I'm gonna move on from his, from Battle Cat. 
so that I can finish up He-Man. Um, He-Man's actually almost done. Um, I don't have to do much with He-Man. I'm gonna grab some of that He-Man versus Goku. <laughs> I mean, that's not even a fair fight, man. Goku's going to take that all day. Goku has all those levels of power, and even when He-Man would feel like he's about to win or whatever, Goku can just unlock another level that we've never seen before. Super Saiyan level 12! Or like... What does it do? Like, he goes like from blue to ultra instinct. It's gonna be like blue, ultra instinct, to ultra diamond, to, you know, platinum or onyx or some, you know, Goku level onyx. Um, cause let's face it, um, the people who write that show, um, are gonna eventually run out of things to call Goku's power levels. I remember when he used to just go Kai. Kaioken. Before he even unlocked Super Saiyan for the first time. Dude, he might be a Pokemon. You never know. It would not, it would literally not surprise me in the least if the next form of Goku was something like Diamond or, I mean, they did blue for crying out loud. And it was called blue, you know, like that, you know what I mean? And, like, Goku Black was, like, Rosé. You know, Super Saiyan Rosé. Like, those were the actual names. He might be a Pokemon. You never know. Think about it. Pokemon evolve. Goku evolves. When Pokemon evolve, they gain power and new moves. Goku gains more new power and new moves when he evolves. They get their power levels increased. Saiyans do. So do Pokemon. I mean, I'm going on record to say I think Goku is a Pokemon. I'm so glad I get to work from home tomorrow. Because I'm going to go online and start a Goku is a Pokemon campaign. I'm going to get the whole internet behind me. He does eat the rare candy, I'm telling you. Sensu beans? What do you think that is? That's a freaking max potion. You're like, okay. 
Moving on. Again, like, I love Orko. He's, I mean, I love Orko. But aside from what we saw him do in Revelation, I just feel like his magic is not reliable. And I think Mewtwo is going to take that, like, he's going to take advantage of that. So I got to give it to Mewtwo. I think uh, my boy Orko is kind of out of the running for a lot of stuff. Um, I don't know if I should paint He-Man's eyes. They're awfully small. I'm going to get a little bit of Null Oil for that cross on his chest. Um, evil in, I think. <clears throat> I don't know why, though. I know you're going to ask me why. I'm not super sure why. Uh, let me get some. Dang it. Battle Cat versus Arcanine. Um, I mean, Arcanine has magic, right? Can breathe fire and stuff. Battle Cat doesn't have any magic, but has raw strength. So, Does Arcanine have a trainer, or is it a wild Arcanine? Because I feel like that matters. I mean, if He-Man... Yeah, I, I was going to say if Battle Cat doesn't have He-Man. Um, so I think... I think Battle Cat wins, because... Um, I think without a trainer, the Arcanine's just not going to know what to do. 
and I feel like Battle Cat, even though he doesn't have He-Man with him, uh, has been with He-Man before, or he wouldn't be Battle Cat. So he's learned from He-Man kind of what to do. Whereas a wild Arcanine, I'm getting really scientific about this. Um, a wild Arcanine wouldn't have that experience. I didn't realize how blurry that was. I, I honestly, I think I leave his eyes alone. They're so small, and I think it's okay to not paint his eyes. I don't know what you guys think. I think in this case, it is acceptable to not paint his eyes. I do need to paint the um, cross. Are you ready for this? Skeletor versus. Cell. Um, are we talking about perfect cell? I'm assuming we are. Because you're a jerk and you would do that to me. <laughs> mm. If you weren't my friend. So I think in order to, I think in order to determine the answer to this, we need to take a scientific look at who each of those villains have fought and who has beaten them. So in Cell's case, he had literally everything but the kitchen sink thrown at him. And he won against everything except for Team Gohan with the assistance of uh, with the assistance of his father, Goku, who is argu arguably the most powerful being ever. Um, that is the only thing that could beat Cell. Trunks threw everything he had at him. Freaking Krillin threw everything he had at him. Vegeta threw everything he had at him. Um, who else? Android, was it Android 16? Android 16 literally blew up doing it. Um, or, you know, killed himself. I think Vegeta may have killed himself doing it, too. He may have died when he did his final flash. I can't remember if he died or not. Anyway.
way too much. Um, so yeah, so that's that's how Cell died. Um, so let's now take a look at how Skeletor died. Um, I mean, technically he hasn't. Maybe he has and then come back. But also, He-Man really hasn't tried to kill him. You know, he just wards him off. I, I think He-Man easily could, if he wanted to, kill Skeletor. Um, he's just not that type of hero. So... Why have we talked about all of these things? Well, uh, because we need to determine how, uh, who's going to win, right? So we take the people that have thwarted those enemies and we pit them against each other. So the full power of Super Saiyan 2 Gohan with the help of his father versus He-Man. So the answer, sir, is Cell would win that fight. You like how I did that? How much stronger are the Masters than the Z Fighters? Um, I think we need teams. Because when you say Z Fighters, are you talking like Yamcha, Krillin, um, Tien... Chiatsu, Goku. I mean, that's the Z Fighters, right? I mean, I wouldn't even put Piccolo in that group. I wouldn't put Gohan in that group. I wouldn't put Vegeta in that group. And when you're pitting them up against the Masters... I mean, if Goku's in the group, like... Goku is the cheat code here. Like, go it's the same thing with Superman, right? Like, Goku is the cheat code. Goku has gone up against everything, and, and you know, while he has died, he's always come back. I just don't know how you... How you have Goku on your team, and you don't win. I mean, if you're taking Goku and He-Man out of it, then I'm going to have to give it to... I mean, you think it's okay without painting the eyes, right? Let me see if I can get, like, really in on the face. I just feel like I would totally screw up the face with, if I painted the eyes. Man, that's...
that symbol on the chest looks sick. I, I don't know what to do about the eyes. <laughs> it's really bothering me. Because I don't know what to do. I do have to do Battle Cat's eyes. So let's take a look at that. I think they're yellow. Yes, they are. I mean, I could paint his eyes. Like, I mean, I have the skill to do it, but I just don't know how it would look when the when the face is so small. I mean, worst case scenario, I could paint them and then if I don't like it, paint over them. But yeah, you're right. Counterproductive to do it, I think. Um, because it looks fine. I think it looks pretty good, actually. I'm almost done, guys. Uh, I, can f I can feel the end. We'll be done in just a few minutes. I'm going to use my dry brush. Get some of the stone color. to dry brush these rocks while I let Battle Cat's eyes dry. I mostly just want the big rocks. I don't really care so much about the little rocks. I just want the big rocks to look kind of the same as Skeletor's. It's good enough for me. You don't have to do a ton. I'm gonna grab a light brown. I'm gonna mix it in with my uh, existing brown color that I used. 
on um, on like his uh, boots and his loincloth. Doesn't look like I did much on that one cloth at all. Which I don't really have to. Man at Arms versus Batman. Um, I mean, does Batman have all of his ga gadgets? Because if he does, then I think he's I think he's the clear winner there. I mean, it would be a good fight for sure. Let's finish up Battle Cat's eyes here and put some tufts on there and call it good. Almost there.
Not super happy with that, uh, with that eye. I may fix it in a minute. I'm going to get some tufts. This is a tuft, if you don't know what I'm talking about. They are made by Army Painter. These are the Highlander tufts. It's pretty much my go-to. And the reason that it's my go-to is because it's the only ones I've got. I really need to get some more. Different colors and stuff like that. But it works, so I don't complain. But eventually I'm going to run out anyway, so. Um, so I'm going to take tweezers, get them like that. Uh, I'm going to use just some regular super glue. Put a tiny dot of super glue on the end there, and then I'm going to pick a spot on the base, and I'm going to put it on there, and then kind of push it down with my tweezers, and then I'm going to do one more because I like having them on there. Again, a little dot of super glue. Man, it just looks, I love those bases. Uh, okay, I've got the ultimate versus question for you, and I want you to use the same scientific reasoning that you use, Skeletor versus Cell. Okay, this will probably be the last one because we're wrapping up, so this better be the ultimate. I'm ready. I'm just getting some plain uh, black for the um, for the rim. No weapons, no magic, sword, just skill and raw strength. Prince Adam, while well, he loses, so who's he against? I would smack him so hard that he would leave Eternia and go to Sesame Street. <laughs> that was pretty quick thinking on my feet. What I was going to say, I was like, where would he go? And the first thing that came in my head was Sesame Street. It was good thinking. Smack him all the way from Eternia to Sesame Street. shaking really bad and I don't know why so I'm being very very slow and I I really apologize I should be done with this part by now but I'm like Ooh. Uh, 
I think it's just fatigue. Uh, painting this long without a break, it eventually starts to uh, wear on you. Which is not to say I don't enjoy it. I do. Um, one of the reasons I haven't taken a break on either of my streams is because until five minutes ago, uh, when I started feeling it, I didn't think to make like a... I need to make like a uh, like a screen in OBS that says like, be right back, taking a potty break. So then like halfway through the stream, I can like give myself five minutes to kind of get some water, go to the bathroom. I know lots of streamers that do that, like a just stepped away, be right back kind of screen. So that way when people join the screen, they don't look at the screen and they're like, where's the person? He's not here. Um, I'll have to add that to my, there was something else I was going to add earlier, and I don't remember what it is now. Let me look at this eye one more time. can do a little better just looks so bad the problem is this paw comes up and so it's hard to get my brush in to the eye but you can kind of see right there on stream how this eye on the where's the thing on the left is slightly more filled in than the one on the right and that's because the paw is in the way and I can't like get to it and it's really frustrating I mean it's fine I, I don't think it will be super noticeable the problem is is I'm noticing it right now and it's bothering me and nothing. Two seconds. Sorry, one more thing. <laughs> I keep saying, I'm done. I'm almost done. This is one of the problems when it comes to painting on my own stream is I just want it to be perfect. So I'm getting just pure white and I'm gonna get the smallest dot on my brush. 
hopefully the smallest dot. And I'm just going to put two microscopic dots in Battle Cat's eyes to just kind of give them like a little glow. did absolutely nothing whatever done calling it done as I reach for paint Really calling it done now. So that's it. That's He Man. Um, I thought, I think, he turned out as good as I had hoped. Um, obviously, He Man is um, probably my favorite um, fictional character on the planet. Um, always has been, always will be. Um, and if I had to choose between the Star Wars universe and the He-Man universe, I would choose He-Man all day, every day. Um, let's look at him next to Skeletor. Those look incredible. Uh, and I'm so glad to have him done. Like I said, this model has been sitting on my desk for probably close to a year. Uh, and I'm so excited that he is now done. And uh, just like last week, we have clocked in at three hours and 30 minutes. We're about four out, four minutes over. Um, like I said, please go follow all my socials. Um, I won't tell you what they are again because they were already up on screen. And I don't want to bore you with me saying that over and over again. Um, next week... Tune in. Uh, we'll be doing this every Thursday, um, barring any, you know, family things or anything like that. Uh, but on my socials, I post calendars and stuff. Like I said, I have content that comes out on my socials every single day. Um, so if you're not following, please go follow all that stuff. Um, yeah, so I will uh, probably not tonight, but tomorrow morning I will get up, take pictures of what we painted. So that way we've got... Um, some cool uh, photos of uh, He-Man, and I'll I'll try and make some cool TikToks using uh, He-Man and Skeletor. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, I don't know. I don't have anything else really. Uh, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. This means the world to me that you guys are here. Uh, it doesn't matter if I have one viewer or a hundred viewers or a thousand viewers. Um, all of you mean uh, everything to me, individually and as a group. So I really appreciate that. Uh, make sure you take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Play your games. Paint your miniatures. And I will see you next week. And now I'm going to roll that. Let me press the button thing. Rolling the outro. It's so tiny. <laughs>